Good morning. I'm on kind of, kind of early this morning, for, for normal anyway. Tomorrow I'll be back at 9 o'clock time. Uh, Ecclesiastes, the book we're going to start reading today, is a book that is attributed to Solomon, and most likely written during his later years. And uh, some ways it, it seems... Um, it's one of those books that you probably should almost read the end of it before you read the beginning of it, so to, so that you know as we read through it, it sometimes it feels like you're um, it, it isn't a, a joyful book, you know. It's but it's it, it's a book that looks for the meaning of life. It, it sounds like the, the writer is you know facing a, a the futility of an existence without God, but but yet. It mentions joy and joy of the Lord several different times as we read through it. Um, and the the book kind of concludes with the, the the fear God and keep His commandments, uh, for this is what you know human human beings are intended to be and to do. Um, and so now, just to look quickly at uh, at some of the first three chapters today. Um, it, Chapter one begins with vanity. You know, talking about vanity, and this was, this was our Old Testament reading not so awfully long ago on a Sunday morning, that you would read verse two of chapter one. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity, and then you would jump forward to, to chapter two, verse eighteen, and and you would read, or to, to verse four or somewhere. You you jump forward and. And, and read some more to, yeah, to verse 18. And then it's, you know, I hated my labor, which I wore all under the sun. And, and it, you know, what it ends with, you know, it's, it's all vanity. And um, kind of sounding, you know, like life is totally fuel, futile, rather. There's, you know, anything and everything we do has no meaning. And that's, you know, kind of the way I look at, you know, vanity is, you know, puffing yourself up for no reason or, you know, and, and that. But, you know, so there's a, um, you know, Ecclesiastes is basically, I think, Solomon kind of reflecting upon life, life in its entirety. You know, verse 2 says, two and, or 3 and 4 rather, What profit has a man from his labor which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another comes with the earth, abides forever, you know. Uh, just an, an admittance of the, you know, the, the, the human beings. I mean, we live, we die, and our lives are finite. There is a, an end to them. Um, starting in verse 12, you know, talks a little bit about kind of the grief of wisdom. If I set my heart to seek and search out wisdom concerning what is done under heaven, this this is a burdensome task given to me by God, it says. And then again, all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. So, I mean, it's just, you know, if, <clears throat> you know, something that is wrong, you know, it, it, it's wrong. You can't change a wrong to a right. In verse 18 of chapter 1, as it says, For in much wisdom is much vexation, much, much grief. You know, and, you know, when we, sometimes, sometimes knowing more just, causes us more more pain and more anguish you know we don't we don't ever know all of the answers that's just part of the way it is um in chapter two again it talks an awful lot about the vanity it talks about the wise and the foolish and uh, you know in verse 12 of chapter two i turned to myself to consider wisdom and madness and folly you know contemplating thinking about all things you know, what can a man do that succeeds the king? Only what he's already done, you know. And he says, I saw that wisdom excels folly. And and wisdom, yeah, I mean, to, to be, you know, and wisdom isn't always, you know, brain smarts. It's common sense. It's it's doing the right thing at the right time. It, it's knowing when to say something and when not to say something. And, and that's when we get into chapter 3, as, you know, when chapter 3 is... I remember it was one a, a favorite song of mine. You know, when I was growing up, um, I think the birds are one of the first ones to to turn. You know, you know to sing, turn, turn, turn. Everything has a season um, and a purpose under heaven. You know, and and as we 
I mean, I remember reading through Ecclesiastes for the first time and thinking, man, those are, that's word for word for the song, you know. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to sh harvest what is planted, a, you know, a time to sow, a time to reap, a time to kill and heal. And it's just, I, I mean, as I read as I read chapter 3, I mean, I, I almost have to sing it, you know. And um, it's it's been, you know, to, to think about that, that, you know, words from the Bible became a top, top 10 song. I don't know if it ever made number one or not, but it was a very popular song. And, and you hear it played on all these channels um, yet today, you know, depending on, I think it was in the 60s when, when the birds, I think it was the birds anyway, that made that song popular and, and everything. And um, it's, it, it's just one more example of how, how much God's word impacts every aspect of our lives. You know, we, and and I, you know, you think about a lot of sayings. You know, in Aesop's fables too, a lot of those are based somewhat on, on things that you can find in the Bible as well. But it's you know, and you know, and um, that God gives us so much. Um, so the the song, you know, a time of war, a time of peace ends chapter verse eight that way and and these verses uh ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 14 are verses that i know i've read at funerals different times and it's a reminder that you know throughout our lives there are you know different times different instances of, of everything that goes on and you know so we have the the words of that so many of us are familiar with the song, turn, 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 but then verse nine, what profit has the worker from that which he labors? A question. I've seen God's given task, which the sons are to be occupied in, and, and it's, you know, every everything, you know, the writer says at the end of verse 14, God does it that men should fear before him. And the fear of the Lord isn't necessarily quaking in fright, but fear is respect, reverence, awe, wonder, you know, and appreciation. You know, that, that word fear encompasses so much. You know, when it says we are to fear and love God, and and that's, you know, Martin Luther uses that that word sometimes in his explanations in, of the in, the, in the small catechism. You know, we are to fear and love God so that, and it, it, it means to have that respect, to have that awe, to just, you know, to be in wonder. That, that this God of heaven knows who we are and looks at us and forgives us and welcomes us. Um, chapter 3, verse 17 says, I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. And, and again, that reflects back to uh, the first verses of chapter 3, this way, you know, a time for every purpose. And, um, and it and that God will be the judge. And, you know, we have so many people today that say that, you know, you can't judge me. Well, and I've said this before many times, and I'll continue to say it. You know, we don't judge a person's eternal existence. We don't judge a person's uh, relationship with God. We can judge between what is right and what is wrong. We can judge if someone breaks a commandment or not. You know, if you know stealing is is bad, we judge someone for that. Murder is bad, we judge someone for that. You know, slander is bad, we judge someone for that. But we don't judge someone's eternal salvation. That's up to God. Chapter three pretty much ends, verse 22, I perceive that nothing is better that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his heritage. For who can bring him out to see what will happen after him? So, you know, it's you know when our lives end, when you know when when our life ends, I mean that's that's the testimony of who we are. I mean after after I die, you know, I can't change who I was. I can't change my relationship with God. You know, when I when I die, when this physical body dies, you know, that is the summation of who I am is who I have been. Nothing is better that a man should rejoice in his own works. We, you know, and just to be content to know that I have lived my life not always perfectly, 
but I've lived my life knowing and trusting in God, trusting his love, his grace, and his forgiveness. And if that's the way my life is judged, that'll be fine with me.